Hey, welcome back to another episode of Rally Caps. Thanks for clicking on this video or listening on whatever podcast streaming app you use. Today we are talking to Jesse Driftwood, but first we wanted to give you a little heads up that we started a Patreon. A Patreon is a place where you can help support us financially. More so Steven, just because he's been editing absolutely freaking everything. And uh, yeah, it's just starting at $5 a month. You're going to get bonus episodes, all the conversations that Steven and I have after every guest. Uh, before this, it was on my Patreon, and we named it the B-Sides, and we figured we would do this whole rebrand and call it Extra Innings, because, you know, the baseball theme. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so it's just a, a way to access more content from us to help support the channel, uh, support the podcast in general, and for future educational content um, through audio and uh, other ways to run your business, that kind of stuff as well. So if you want to go check it out, it's down in the show notes or the description below wherever you're watching or listening. And I hope you enjoy this episode. Peace. Okay, here we go. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rally Caps, the podcast for a creative entrepreneur building a business for the long haul. Today, we are out and about with Canada's very own Jesse Driftwood. Seeing an opportunity when Instagram stories were first created, Jesse was the first person to make beautiful vertical movies that he shared on stories, which naturally got the attention of basically every single person in the video creator space. He has since grown a down-to-earth YouTube channel that showcases his kind of insane amount of talent in the way he plans, films, and edits his movies. If you haven't watched him edit, you haven't quite lived yet. Now he's grinding every day to claim his real handle on Twitter, but for the time being has settled for names like Jesse Flipswood, Jesse Drift Won't, Jesse Knock on Wood, Jesse Drift Out to Sea, Jesse Woodstock, and Jesse Drift Misunderstood. Is all of that correct, Jesse? <laughs> no, the first two were correct, and all the rest I'm literally writing down like... <laughs> <laughs> Years later. Uh, that's I didn't even know that Stephen wrote that. <laughs> I thought they were all... <laughs> No, those I've aren't all so real. Many. <laughs> I've had a lot. I have had a lot of Twitter names. And the truth is, I I didn't even want Twitter when I got it. I only got it because I was out to dinner with Peter, and he basically said, like, get a get a Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. it, he said, if for no other reason than when you're pitching brands on collaborations, whatever, things like that, it's just something to fill out your deck. You can just say, I've got mm -hmm. X amount of followers here, X amount of followers here. My Twitter, an active community of 20,000 people, whatever, right? Um, I've never done any brand stuff on Twitter, <laughs> so it didn't work. But uh, it was my favorite social media platform. It's, it was the first one. Excuse me. I had to cease or... Get away from uh, me. Uh, oh. it, it, was the, it was the first um, social media platform that I got into after making social media my job where I didn't feel like I had to take it seriously. Because mm -hmm. even a little bit, if I'm going to make a video now anywhere, I still kind of feel like I should put some amount of effort into what I'm putting here. Whereas I don't know what it is with Twitter. I feel like I could just post a selfie on the toilet and not care and just be nope. okay with that. So yeah, I started changing my the, name a lot on there. That's the best way to go about life. It brings me so much joy every time you do that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, you you once this isn't a question, but I just wanted to let you know that you once made me feel very special at the moment. Film Invitational. We were at three six eight, and I acted in Daniel and Rachel's uh, video, yep. and I locked eyes with you, and I figured you had no idea who I was, and you're like, I know your face, and it made <laughs> me blush, and I just want to say thanks for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you had been in other stuff with them before that, though, too, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like a few things, yeah. Yeah, so I think it's not like I saw you in one thing. I think I'd seen you on the internet a few times. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, that did happen. I always, <laughs> I always appreciate those phrases that you say. It's like, that just made me feel like I was your friend immediately. You were like, I know your face. I was like, you do? <laughs> okay, want to know a funny story? This is specifically yeah. for, for you, Eric. <laughs> when my wife was asking me this morning whose podcast I was going on. I was like, you know that guy that I say is like a better looking and more talented version of me? <laughs> what? She's like, yeah, the one who also, the one who wears hats. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> that one. She's like, and he's a better runner than you? I was like, yeah, that one. <laughs> so that's, that's, oh, that's how I speak about you behind your back. <laughs> oh, 
Well, thank you. That's not even close to true, but thank you. Well, I appreciate that, man. Truth is subjective. Maybe the maybe the running. Maybe the running part. Definitely the running part. Don't maybe the running part me. I've been running two months, okay. and I went the other day with Josh, and I had to. But it was a five k run. I had to stop to walk twice. Hey, you just got to build the base back up. I know. I do. No, wait. Did you do that run in sandals? No, I didn't. Okay. I didn't. But listen, I mean, for those of you who don't know, I love barefoot running. It's my favorite thing. This summer I was doing 10 miles, not even in sandals, just barefoot on the roads. Wow. Feels great. You just... Barefoot it's, on the roads. I know. It's gnarly. And it's purely just about making myself feel better about myself. It's all vanity. You'd be like, oh, I'm a tough guy. <laughs> I could do this. <laughs> I'm connected to this like primal version of myself, right? I'm just, I'm not who I am because I bought fancy stuff. I can do this. Anyways, um, but the unintended ben- benefit is that it fixed my running posture. Um, hmm. I had to stop heel striking because... Y'all as soon as I start, went barefoot, I was like, ow, ah, right? <laughs> um, so I learned how to run properly. So now in the winter, and I put normal running shoes on again, I just have a better stride, which is great. That's sick. We, yeah, we got to wow. do everything we can in our 30s. You know? I know. We really do. I am aging fast. I've lost so much hair in the last six months. Not you, Eric, Dude. my better looking. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, doppelganger. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Right. You're me if the tolls of childhood and pandemic never caught up to me. <laughs> I mean like having children, the tolls of parenthood. <laughs> Which sucks because you oh, got man. the pandemic and kids. You just... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Steven, I'll hit you with some, oh, some compliments later as well. I just got to find them. Yeah. I mean, Dude, I'm not already- searching for them now. <laughs> You already got the uh, the stevia one, so uh, I think that's, yeah, that's pretty sweet, good. Yeah, not bad for me. <laughs> I actually don't even know if that's true. Stevia might be quite bad for you. S- stevia gives you cancer for sure. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, okay, then that's yeah, definitely so. not me. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, shoot. Let's say it doesn't. Let's say it, we'll say it doesn't. Steven, stevia, <laughs> Steven is very sweet, so that's true. Thank so, you. I mean, I don't know if your podcast listeners know this. I'm going to guess they do. How do you guys know each other? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> that is, well, thanks for that Tables one, are host. turned. Yeah, that's... <laughs> we, I have a studio mate where we... we He was mutual friends with both. He, we were... I don't know how to say that. Um, you get the idea. He grew up with another guy. I'm having... I'm explaining this terribly. <laughs> we, Steven, met, we met many moons ago. Uh, ah. no, <laughs> no, um, my best friend from high school went to Chicago for school. He met Eric's friend, Aaron, cause they went to school together. I met Aaron through my buddy, Dan from high school and then met Eric basically through Aaron long, like, cool. and that, that was like a six year process basically. But we met in it the, was, that's yeah, like a, yeah. that's the true story of, you know, my ex-girlfriend's uncle's dog walkers. Yes. <laughs> Whatever. That's yeah. cool. I oh, know. I'm into that. It's a super There's small no world kind of thing. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah we, we, we met, met up for coffee in New York, upstate yeah. New York, yep. one May 2018. And yep. both um, both had a common connection in fanboying uh, Benj Heish because we're both wedding photographers. And so mm-hmm. he was I remember first... fanboying Benj Heish. It's weird that I talk oh, to yeah. him now and it's normal. And it's not, yeah, right. <laughs> That's how I feel with you too. It's just like all of us looked at you and we're like, oh yeah, I'll never talk to him ever. Yep. So it's and pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I first saw you in uh, Peter's video a couple of years now at this point. Yeah. That's been, it's been years. Yeah, like that, like vertical movies, that whole idea. I was like, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. insane. Like I never, no one never saw anything like that. On the topic of, of YouTube and the vertical videos and everything that you've, you've done and the incredible editing tutorials and everything that you've put together, the way you infuse your personality with that, the amazing community that you've kind of created through your YouTube channel. I'm curious that like, if analytics and algorithms and all of this stuff that is kind of like the, the looming pressure of 
the platform of YouTube itself, if all of that disappeared, would you still be creating all of that stuff? Or would there be like an entirely different genre that you would want to make videos about or just things that you'd want to make? Well, yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's a thing I think about all the time, uh, mostly because I have no idea where I'm going with all of this. It really is just, I'm just okay. kind of trying my best day to day. And my best is just not great. Like it's not, um, Shut up. It, no, I mean, sorry, I, that, I'm not trying to doubt. Like my, my best isn't, good at the the algorithm stuff my best mm -hmm. isn't the good at the analytics the like knowing what to do so my best is like i don't know i'm just feeling it out and seeing what people are commenting on what they relate to what they don't relate to um mm -hmm. but yeah i'd still be i'd still be making things i'd probably be a lot happier honestly mm -hmm. if if all that if all that back end the boring business strategy part of it if the strategy all went away i'd be a much happier person hmm. mm -hmm. or maybe not maybe i'm just making <laughs> excuses i don't know no all of us would be for sure that's really it's a trap. yeah it's just, it's the thing it's I, I i probably bring this up on every podcast i'm just not a i'm just not an entrepreneur a and or at least not in the in the way that i would define an entrepreneur in my head. I just hmm. am, I don't care about it. It's not where my brain goes. It's not a knock on people who are, and it's, it's not a, you know, a bar I even aspire to. It's just not where I find joy. It's not uh, hmm. what I look for when I'm trying to spend my, my free time. So I like making videos. I, I have fun doing it. And strangely enough, the world is in such a place where being a bit of a goofball with a camera it is a viable career option. Um, and like, lucky me, because any other generation, I'm eaten by wolves or, yeah. or I'm a, a line worker or something. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I'm just saying this is a very unique time in history, and I, I don't know if it'll be here for long or forever mm -hmm. or for what. But uh, for now, I am very grateful that I get to spend my days doing things I like doing. And, um, like my kids have granola bars for breakfast. It's, it's both. It's not. So yeah, I like it. It's great. You're like the, the most, you're the purest entrepreneur is what I, the way I see it. It's like, oh, maybe I wish I didn't care as much as I do about business a lot. And I think that is like caring way less about that stuff is what tends to be more give you more longevity in doing that stuff and just kind of throwing caution to the wind. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe I could certainly use more of it in my life. Certainly mm -hmm. if I'm trying to grow my channel more, because mm -hmm. right now my channel or channels only really grow or not based on my most recent video and did it do well. And if a video does really well, um, then my channel can grow. But mm -hmm. I know so many other people where their growth is almost disconnected from their video by video basis. It's mm -hmm. because they're so smart about, I don't know, what do you, what do you have? Email lists or yeah. courses, I, right? They have other avenues to not just grow in size, but grow in sustainability and all that kind of stuff. So I, I could use more of a kick in the butt to do that kind of stuff. But for now, mm. for now I'm okay. Yeah. You like making okay. videos. I do. I love it. I do. That's honestly, that's really encouraging to hear because I think it can be really easy to get sucked into the entrepreneur side and all of the, because there's a lot of excitement there for sure, but there's a lot of just stressors and pressure that come from it too. And it feels like you have to have your hand in like every pot, like you're just doing a little bit of everything always. Mm -hmm. So it's cool right. to like hear from you, someone I admire, someone I look up to say like, Hey, I'm, I'm a lovable goofball that's making videos and I'm enjoying that. And like, I'm providing for my family with that without like overthinking it to a certain degree. Uh, so that's just really, yeah, encouraging I'm certainly to hear. overthinking it. Um, oh. <laughs> but, uh, that, that's just because I, I overthink everything in my life. That's a personality trait mm -hmm. more than anything. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a thought and I lost it, but no, I, 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 Emma I know exactly tweets. what you mean. I love when she tweets and she says like, Go give support to Jesse because he's just like doing this thing and providing for our little family. I think she she's so like sweet and earnest. She's the I know I know what people mean when they say better half because I have a better half. 
She's just, <laughs> like just in terms of being a human and like caring for people around you and having community and telling people how you feel. She's much better than me. Much, much better than me. And I just I'll pretty lucky that. that I tied myself to that horse. For me. <laughs> With Emma as well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my yeah. better horse. <laughs> I know you uh, actually mentioned before we started recording, Jesse, that uh, you were on Tyler Stallman's podcast recently. Mm-hmm. You um, talked about the, the, I think it was a lot of like gear talk for the majority of the episode. And I actually started listening to it near the end where you started talking about uh, your the past six months where you're kind of like working through uh, ADHD and like kind of figuring yeah. that out. And I think yeah. you said you've been kind of like trying out some medication stuff for the past two months or so. And, uh, I mean, one, I was like, I had no idea. That's just really interesting to learn. And I wanted to yeah. ask like how, how that's been going, how you've like found that like influence your day to day life with your family and with your work and all that. It's been really interesting because it's been a mixed bag. So mm-hmm. for starters, um, when I started talking with my doctor about it, she basically was pretty upfront you know I don't expect that we're gonna find the right medication or the right dosage or anything like that on our first try or second try or anything like that so I already went into it knowing it's okay if this one isn't right or if none of them are right or whatever we're gonna have Mm -hmm. to go through a bit of a trial period and figure it out so I've done one medication at two different dosages so far Mm -hmm. and for the past week I haven't taken anything Um, and the reason for that is actually um, I had a camping trip that I just got home from and I, I knew I wasn't going to really need it there. Mm-hmm. Um, or I, or I didn't want it. I kind of just wanted to try and just be in nature, right. And not thinking mm-hmm. about things, but I had been c- taking my medication pretty consistently for about two months. And I don't know if there's any withdrawal type side effects or anything like that. So I also didn't want the my camping experience to be negatively impacted by something like that. If I'm mm-hmm. getting really bad headaches, mm-hmm. um, but on the the flip side, the my most recent medication, I have to be really on top of how much food I'm eating and mm-hmm. my water intake. I need to have a lot of it, otherwise, I get a spike of anxiety. I get really shaky and jittery. I can't think straight. Um, and I was like, I'm camping. I don't know if I'm going to be eating well. I, we're only cooking on a fire in the middle of nowhere. So mm-hmm. I, I just didn't want to have to deal with that. But overall, um, it, it's been qu- really quite positive in a way that I was skeptical it would be. So mm-hmm. I would say probably about an hour after I take it, it's not that I feel different. I feel more like myself on those days when you just look at yourself and go like, today's a good day. You just feel yeah. a bit clearer. You're able to process information. So I just would feel like a, not a better version of me, but a version of me on my better days. So it's mm. a me I know well. Mm-hmm. It's just, I, I was being, I was getting those days more consistently. And in particular, I was finding it actually helpful to, sp- I, this sounds so weird, to spend time with my kids. Um, mm. Because I wasn't getting overwhelmed nearly as easily by noise and chaos and mess. Um, and I think it's just because I could, I could just parse out my thoughts more clearly. Whereas before, my mind would often feel just like a, a chaotic minefield of what do I need to do today? Who needs things from me? What's the state of my house? Have I talked to my parents recently? Like every different aspect of my life felt like they were overlapping Mm -hmm. and so the when Mm -hmm. one kid just has a tantrum it's Mm -hmm. not like it felt only as if a kid was having a tantrum it felt like that tantrum was carving a line through every aspect of my life Mm -hmm. um and so on the days on particularly the the better days when the medication was on a lower dosage and it seemed to be working better with my body i just felt like i could separate those things so even if the kids were freaking out, I felt more able to to listen and not feel as though the rest of my day was a write-off or not feel like mm. it was impeding my ability to do the other things I needed to do. Um, but there's, there's more down the line. I'm still going to have to have a meeting to set up with my doctor in the next week or so um, to talk about all of this. But I'm excited 
to be on the journey, if only uh, to get a better understanding of myself. I'm, I'm not convinced that at the end of this, my decision won't be um, no medication. But even if that is the case, I'll be happy to know myself a little better. This is how I react under medication or not, or this is the ways that it's helping me see clearly, and how can I replicate that clarity in my life? Um, or maybe I'll just find that I can only get there with medication. Maybe it is just a chemical deficiency. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm curious. I don't have any set opinions. I actually, I think I said this on Tyler's podcast. I, I want people who need medication to have guilt-free, shame-free access to medication. And mm -hmm. I want to encourage people that if you don't need it, to don't go on it, right? Mm -hmm. we, the pharmaceutical industry is, is not a good one. It's not one we should mm -hmm. be happy about. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there are people that their lives would be exponentially better just mm -hmm. because there is some sort of chemical deficiency. There's some wiring that they have that other people don't, uh, and this mm -hmm. could be a remedy for them. So yeah. I don't know which one of those camps I'll fall in at the end. Or if there are camps, maybe it's a, a gradient between the two. In the middle. Sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. My, I, I was especially curious when I heard you first mention it on Tyler's podcast because my little sister, I think it was about six months ago, also, also got diagnosed with ADHD. Mm. And even just kind of secondhand learning about her process and kind of the ups and downs with it. I it's, it had never affected me personally, so I just didn't know much about it. But it's been yeah. very interesting to just learn more about it and to kind of, I don't know, just like shed more light on the topic. And I, I really like your point of like, hey, for the people that need it, absolutely amazing. Like you have perfect access to it, but also like if you don't, then don't. So like finding that that balance of the two and just making sure that people are well cared for and, and just making sure they're treating themselves well. Yeah, and I've been talking to so many people that do similar work that we do. People in the online world that often have similarities, it, mind similarities, brain similarities mm -hmm. to us. And my worry is that I just don't want to romanticize the idea of medication right now, particularly because I don't have a strong opinion on where it fits in my life. And yeah, I don't sure. want people to just hear this and think, it's, it's a magic solution. It's a cure-all. And you mm -hmm. go from, I don't know how to do my work to I just like crush through my work instantly. Yep. If anything, I have had experiences where I've definitely been able to work more clearly on it. I've also had experiences where if I do get sidetracked, I'm laser focused on my sidetrack. Mm. So I'll just start <laughs> researching a random topic. And it's like, great, there goes eight hours because all I can do now is research this other topic. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if that's the case for all medications, right? Who, I have no idea, but I'm just, I, I am weary of pushing this kind of narrative that it's, yeah. it's more than it is mm -hmm. or that it's anything that I don't know it is yet. Yeah. It's not like it's the limitless drug from that Bradley Cooper movie where you're just like, all oh, right, I cool. I wanted it to be so bad. I <laughs> yeah. really, in fact, I thought about rewatching that movie <laughs> just because <laughs> cause that's what I wanted it to be. Um, yeah. But it hasn't been. Sorry, I just had a Caesar burp. <laughs> cut that out, oh. right? <laughs> um, yeah, so I, uh, I had read this Twitter thread that helped me understand what it was which functionally framed it as, as this. Um, on average, the ADHD brain just has a, a dopamine deficiency. So your brain is just mm. dripping less dopamine. So imagine if you're, you're just thirsty all the time. You have dry mouth. And so naturally, if you're thirsty all the time, your body's like, where I need a drink. I'm, I need water, right? So you're always trying to just satiate that thirst. And it's not mm. because... It's not because you can't stay focused. It's not because you are a, a hyperactive child or something like that. It's because you're thirsty. You have an actual chemical bodily need. And mm -hmm. so you'll be looking for that elsewhere. Um, and so they were saying that the ADHD brain is kind of like that with dopamine. And so where, um, I don't know, a pseudo normal brain, when you do something you need to do, you make your bed or you clean up your mess or you finish your work, let's use that as an example. You finish your work for the day. 
the normal brain goes like, here's your dopamine, bloop, bloop, bloop. And then you walk <laughs> home and you're all happy as can be because you did the thing you were supposed to do and your brain rewarded you for that. On average, the ADHD brain just doesn't have that experience. So while I often know I need to trudge through this edit, I need to get certain things done, I need to make better priorities, my brain is, it has that thirst. So it's like, what will give me dopamine? <laughs> Anything. Mm -hmm. I will, I'll scroll Instagram, I'll check email, I'll read about the random news that doesn't affect me in any way. I'll just do mm -hmm. anything to try and get that hit. And then in that Twitter thread, um, this woman had basically articulated that you can imagine ADHD medication working just as a way of giving you a healthy, a healthy baseline for that dopamine mm. so that you don't have to spend your whole day going, ah, where can I get it? Where can I get it? You're just not mm. mm -hmm. thirsty anymore. Mm. And this is probably a big oversimplification of it. But it was extremely helpful for me because it was able for me to like I could finally categorize different behaviors of mine and line it up with that perfectly. Mm -hmm. I could just see, oh, at the end of the day when I know I should sleep or I don't know. I don't want to bring up things that are too generic because I think everyone has those experiences to an extent. Um, but, yes, yeah, so many of my behavioral patterns lined up with all I wanted was some sort of dopamine hit. I just mm. – I just wanted to feel, feel alive. I don't know. Um, and my very first day taking uh, medication, I was on a, the lowest dosage of Concerta. It was what was most bizarre was that I would be watching a YouTube video, one that I really like, and my brain would be like, Why, I don't need to do this. I would, I would just turn it off, which is not an experience I've had before mm -hmm. because I wanted to watch the video, mm -hmm. but because I didn't need the dopamine or something, I don't know what it was. That was, hmm. that was a very unique experience for me to, to actively stop procrastinating and then go do the thing I was supposed to do. So that was a moment mm. where it felt like the limitless drug, mm. but um, <laughs> that's not a feeling that got sustained after that. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe that was a placebo. It's good that you're exploring it, though. I mean, ultimately, I think what the most sustainable thing to do is just to figure it out for yourself and I think that's really good that you're taking those steps to seeing like what will be best for you and seeing mm. if you do, you do want that to be your experience that you you know because I'm sure there's plenty of you that is awesome because you are procrastinating in that way and that makes you Jesse you know and it's like mm -hmm. and I see that a lot in like the work that you make and doing those things and people love that about you too so it's definitely that balance also the balance of like the conflicting feelings you have about big pharma, but also it helping people. And, um, ultimately I hear the conclusion kind of being like, figure it out for yourself. Yeah. It's, I, it's complicated and there's a lot of yep. variables and humans are infinitely varied from one person to another. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I, this is how I feel about most things though. I have very few strong opinions and I think most of it comes down to, not even the fact that I think things are gray. I just don't trust myself a lot of the time mm -hmm. to 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 make that right decision. So even sometimes people will be expressing an opinion to me like, well, what do you think? I'm like, I think you're probably right. I think you are probably right. But mm. I know that I've thought things that are right enough times in my life and then realized they were wrong. Mm -hmm. That I don't, it's like, I don't even trust my own opinions because probably mm -hmm. later I'll I'll disagree with them. And that might sure. just be a, like a real character flaw of mine. That might just me be being a coward or something. But uh, in general, I just, I trust other people's opinions more than my own. <laughs> <laughs> it's just life. It's the experience of life. Yeah. The older you get, the more confusing it all gets. It really does. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is a perfect segue to <laughs> do some rapid fire questions. <laughs> yeah. This is a new rally cap <laughs> staple right here. We're doing it every episode now. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We're testing it out with Jesse. He's the perfect guest for it. It's the pilot. Okay. I won't even think. Stretch okay. It out. I won't good. even think. Because that's what I want. I, I'm just going to go really quick. And if you just like don't answer, I'm just going to move on to the next one or something. I only I literally wrote these right before we hit record. So I think there's like 10 or something. Okay. okay. Ready, Eric? I'm just going to introduce the segment. Hey, everyone. Okay. Welcome to Rally Caps Batting Practice. Oh, wow. that was really good. That, here we go. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ready? 
Set, yes. go. Choice of mayonnaise. Which one? Uh, the Hellman's. How many hours of sleep do you get per night? Six. Where do you get your clothes? Thrift stores. Where? What are you drinking? <laughs> it's, it's a disgusting tomato <laughs> juice cocktail with bean <laughs> brine in it. It's so bad. How many miles of running is too many miles of running? Okay, fine. It's really good. How many miles of running is too many miles of running? I don't believe there's an answer to that. How many trips to McDonald's a week is too many? Two. How old are you? 31. What are your children's middle names? Anne, <laughs> David, Alar. What is YouTube? A, it's a platform where you put internet videos. <laughs> What's the worst flavor of anything? Olive. Mm. What's your dream pet? A dream pet. Wow. I mean, I really want a hairless cat. My wife, won't, my wife won't let me get a hairless cat, so we'll have to compromise like a short-haired cat. <laughs> okay. That, I'd say that was a pretty good – that was a success. Yeah, that was fun. You're I would really like to apologize. I am enjoying this this tomato juice more than I let on there. I Like, it's outwardly gross. If you were to, If anyone were to describe this beverage to you – their reaction should be oh gross but you drink it and it's it's not bad yeah, yeah. when you said bean <laughs> brine i felt yeah. everybody cringe bean, <laughs> green yeah. bean brine <laughs> yeah that's like a, i don't know people well, do like peanut butter and pickle sandwiches don't they oh do I they heard that and that sounds like oh i don't know i should convince everyone that it's the greatest sandwich so all your <laughs> listeners just go make one <laughs> I just think like that guy's a psychopath. <laughs> he has no taste. He really should not be trusted for his opinions. <laughs> okay. All right. Transition. All right. This obviously probably the question that everybody asks you because it's, you know, kind of what made you blow up on the scene of filmmaking. Um, the vert vertical video thing. What has it done for your career? What do you see? Like, do you want to do any more of that in the future? I know you do it time to time on your stories now. Um, and then also, like, does it piss you off when people are like, oh, you're the vertical video guy? Um, kind of. No, I mean, I, I have... Th let's start with that last question, which is funny, because yes. I have this just, like, superpower where anytime someone tells me what to do or tells me who I am... I go, nah, uh and then I change. <laughs> so, for example, for a while, I was just making these Instagram stories, and then the more people started being like, yeah, that's what you're good at. You're good at Instagram stories. That's when I was finally decided to take YouTube seriously because mm -hmm. I wanted to say, you don't get to tell me who I am. Now I'm a horizontal person. Now what <laughs> happened is I had these videos on how I made these transitions in my videos do very well. And I just have always put them in my videos back in high school skate videos. And I, hmm. I've always done it. I, I certainly didn't invent it. I don't know where it came from. But on YouTube, people start being like, you're the transitions gang. You do the transitions. And so then I stopped putting them in my videos. <laughs> and I'm not doing it on purpose. I just really dislike. I, I have an aversion towards being told who I am. And I think that's hmm. because I'm still definitely trying to figure out who I am. And so, I don't know. It would probably be You're more healthy. Rock. It would, yeah, maybe, or it's just childish. I'm not sure. Because <laughs> I, I've heard comedians talk about this, how there is always a balance between telling the jokes you want to tell and listening to the audience. Because if the audience isn't mm. laughing, it's, not a, it's probably not a good joke. Or maybe you haven't mm. found your audience, but there's, there are different ways to do it. Mm -hmm. So... Probably the right option is listen to your audience and figure out what they like and then find out how you can do that authentically. How do you stay true to yourself to do that thing hmm. in a package that the audience likes? So I'm still trying to figure that out. Maybe that is vertical and maybe that is transitions. Hmm. But if I do decide on that, it'll be my choice, not yours. <laughs> um, <laughs> but as far as vertical, I, I still really like it. And I, it, I don't like it because I think it's better. I like it because the platforms that utilize it, I think are fascinating. I think TikTok is a truly wonderful insight into what it really is like being Gen Z. And mm. I'm <laughs> so disgustingly optimistic about it. It, 
<laughs> if you let me rant about how much I think Gen Z is not what they get painted as online, uh, we could be here for hours. I think, I think they're so Go interesting in. and creative, and I think they're so encouraging in a way that you just would not see coming. So there's these hmm. trends on TikTok where... I mean, I don't know how to des- describe the formats. Basically, someone will, the video will start like, tell me, tell me that you're into Instagram yeah. stories. They're telling me, you know, and then someone else will t- say the story. So there was this yep. one going around that was like, uh, show me that, you know, like, show me your boyfriend won't ever cheat on you without telling me your boyfriend will never cheat on you, right? And so they'll just spy into a room while he's doing something so dorky or <laughs> weird or whatever. <laughs> And when I was growing up, these types of videos, if if you put yourself out there like that, if you put a video out on YouTube even with these mm-hmm. really dorky hobbies, the, the comment sections just ripped them apart. Mm-hmm. TikTok is the opposite. Every comment, one after one, it's like, it's so good to see someone who loves something. We just love to see someone who was passionate and mm-hmm. like, we got to really protect him. And anyways... <laughs> and that type of that type of response I see more often than not on TikTok and mm. less often than so on platforms like YouTube. Mm. Um I you guys ever read Petapixel? It's like a photography blog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The comment sections there are so mean. Like just Yeah, you know, they are. They're, they're, it's just a lot of grumpy old photographers that are jaded yeah. and like they hate they certainly hate photo video YouTubers because <laughs> I don't know, be- because it doesn't fit the box that they've made for themselves on what photo video is. And maybe it's a good box. I don't know. But the point is the comment section in TikTok, in my experience is the opposite of the comment mm. section in pay to pixel. It's it's, mm. and maybe it's because they're young and they're seeing things for the first time, but mm. I don't know. I'm so optimistic That's about it. And for me, TikTok really is the, it's the top of the vertical video tower, Hmm. right? That's where almost all vertical video is now. Instagram stories is, I bet a fraction of the viewership that you're getting, you're seeing on TikTok. People are getting hundreds Hmm. of millions of views there. And then beyond that also, I got into filmmaking because of making skate videos and making Mm -hmm. funny music videos in high school um, just with my friends. And so when people ask me how I got into filmmaking and wanting to do this as a career, that's my answer. And I think for so yeah. many people, 10 years from now, they're going to say TikTok. They're going to say they just started filming on their phone mm. to be a part of something, you know, mm. to just make their version of some trend, be it a trendy dance or a, a skit or something like that. And I think a lot of people are going to discover their voice and their love for making videos and for what you know making people laugh making people smile making people feel something Hmm. through video uh so i'm just so i'm still down with vertical video if only (laughs) that gen z people that are interested in doing tiktok hear me say this and go (laughs) all right cool it is still a viable path into video because to me making videos is all about moving your audience Mm. you want them to feel something to empathize to see the world differently mm-hmm. um and if you watch enough tiktok you'll do that you will see the world differently maybe your algorithm mm-hmm. will make you see it worse i'm not sure but um, <laughs> i yeah i i think because i defined filmmaking as the ability to move audience through mostly visuals but also audio and like the mm-hmm. combination of the two uh i think vertical video platforms fit that description just as well it doesn't we don't need to call it filmmaking we don't need to call it cinematography but it's still the thing i love most about video which is Mm. that you get to make a thing like it's arts and crafts and share it with the world online and Mm. they can respond and they can love it or hopefully just love it Mm. (laughs) (laughs) the the resounding thing i keep hearing from you is just the purpose behind what you make versus Mm. um just the superficial stuff, which could be really easy on TikTok too. You know, like yeah, oh yeah. If you you hit the right stride in the algorithm on that thing, it's like it's gonna send it to the moon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so hmm. it's cool to hear you say that someone who has a large platform just being like, you know, that's at the end of the day, that's 
what you care about in, in making what you make is to move people. Yep. And even, if, even if TikTok is the, like, it, it feels silly to say that kind of stuff with a platform called TikTok <laughs> and like, <laughs> you know, like our 30 year old brains, like don't, you know, um, but it's true. It's really easy as, as someone older looking at a younger generation, like scolding and like making fun of, and not really giving any validation for the positive things that are coming out of that generation as well. And I think it's really yeah. profound that you think that way because it is pretty frequent that people our age are just kind of like TikTok, whatever, yeah. you know, and it's like, it's your culture, whether you like it or not. It's like, it's that next generation's culture. Yeah. You know? I'm also just so weary of, I don't want to grow up and just be like old man yells at clouds, right? Yeah. <laughs> every generation does it at least most people do it's just every generation looks down to the next one and goes like oh that's worse than our generation yeah and I, I i really just don't think that's true and in the way that pay to pixel commenters just totally <laughs> trash youtubers in this space i i would not be surprised at all that if 10 15 20 years from now current YouTubers will be trashing whatever the next thing is they'll be the ones on the comment boards doing that same thing uh, hopefully I'm wrong, but I just do not want to be there. I would mm. still love to, yeah. when I'm no longer relevant, I think I'm already there, honestly, <laughs> but when I'm no longer relevant in the social media world, um, great. I, hopefully I can, what, I pass the torch, pass the baton. I'm not really sure how you'd put that, but, and say, Hey, you don't have to follow in my exact footsteps, but maybe there's something you could learn from the way in which we paced our footsteps. I don't know. There's mm. a there's a really bad yeah. metaphor in here, yeah. right? It's like learn the lessons, but that doesn't mean do the same thing. It doesn't mean be the yeah. same person. So hopefully I can still say open enough as I age through my 30s and into my 40s and yeah. 50s is after that. <laughs> Quiz me. Go ahead. Oh you don't think I know what comes next? What's 60s. next? <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> You didn't even ask, and I got there. Um, but yeah, I just want to be able to <laughs> still see childhood and like youth making things the way that I, I'm sure they're feeling the same way I felt when I started making skate yeah. videos or or whatever yeah. or Instagram stories. Even I'm sure people doing things that outwardly might feel dumb is the same impulse and the same mm. guttural feeling that I had, and I want to be able to encourage that in people. It's a different context, but it's a very similar lived experience for sure. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. So that I'm mm -hmm. glad we dedicated this whole show to talking about my love for TikTok. I'm just trying to justify <laughs> how much time I spend on it. <laughs> on TikTok. I do it because it's research and I want to be a better man. <laughs> it's not because of my ADHD that's flaring out of control. <laughs> It's funny. Our next question was literally answered in all of that. So that's, that's Ooh, cool. what was it? Um, it was just like, do you think Instagram is still worth investing in? Oh. Do you care? And I guess that's still a good question. How do you feel about a million apps to choose from with sharing your film? I don't like a million apps to choose from. Um, mm. It's, I don't know what to do about that. I, I think Instagram is on a decline. I think it is dying. Yeah. Um, mm. But again, because my mind doesn't go to, where should I spend my time? What's the most valuable use of my time? Um, I just don't think a lot about it. Usually when I hear a new social media platform, I'm only on it if someone else pushes me on it. The only, like I went on Clubhouse because some people asked, like, will you join our conversation? I think it'd be really cool. It's like really small right now. I was like, all right, cool. Um, but I wasn't, I don't have the personality. Like I mentioned before, I'm not entrepreneurial in this way. When I hear of a new platform, my mind never automatically goes to, okay, cool. How can I optimize this? How can I sure. do something unique and new and interesting here? Um, and kudos to the people that do. I think that's such a cool way to process information. Um, but for me, more options is generally not better for, hmm. for my own mental health anyways. Mm -hmm. um, so I still use Instagram because I have used Instagram. And I mm -hmm. still use YouTube because well, I, I watch a lot of YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm surprised I don't make more TikTok, given how much TikTok that I like. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I want to make, make more there. Is that how you I, say plural? Tick, TikTok? I make more TikTok? It's, I think it's TikTok. 
is the plural. <laughs> no, that's the baby app for TikTok. Oh, right. TikTok. Yes. Yeah. Nice. They make the, the kids only. It's like YouTube kids or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <TikTok. laughs> it's just all bloopy, just doing the dances. You know Bloopy if you have kids. Or Blippy, what's his name? I don't know. That sounds Canadian to me. I literally have no idea what that is. Oh, I mean, if you ever want to research an interesting character, Bloopy or Blippy, I forget. <laughs> I don't even know his name. Dude, dude, dude pulls like 100 million views a video on YouTube. Just, he's oh. just wearing suspenders and an orange hat and just playing kids things. You know, totally kid-friendly. His backstory is fascinating. He like He's been trying for ever to just find massive social media success so he's done Mm. pretty pretty like like bordering on the pornographic side of content right just like trying to find niches where you can get a lot of views and i also might be butchering this story and this might be like encroaching (laughs) upon (laughs) like what's that word libel Uh, libel (laughs) exactly yeah um but it's defamation (laughs) defamation there's something there's something there where he has gone down a bunch of avenues um and and just knocked it out of the park on this one because Mm -hmm. i think for him and maybe it's changed now um i think his mind does go to how can i optimize a platform how can i find Mm -hmm. views and a lot of them i think he is an entrepreneur and -hmm. not just primarily someone who's like i love dressing up in like a train out conductor outfit and going (laughs) (laughs) right (laughs) that just sounds like a totally different person than you though because yeah but people different people just exist for sure it's so weird i like to just talk i like to talk about things and i'm always afraid that people are thinking i'm like poo-pooing them i don't know if people say poo-poo but i just they just are different and i didn't Mm -hmm. choose a lot of the ways that i am yeah over the past few years and just recognizing that people run their businesses differently and it's okay. Like you don't, yeah. that's what I don't like is when their advice just strictly goes, this is how you have to post on Instagram. Mm-hmm, this is mm-hmm. how, this is the amount of YouTube videos you have to make per mm-hmm. month. Like, mm-hmm. yes, there is some substantiated evidence in some of that. But again, similar to what you're talking about with your medication, it's like you need to test the waters for yourself. Like if you posting weekly, and making sure you have a video every Monday is going to mean that you're wildly depressed and not paying attention to your family or, you know, what's important to you. And yeah. it's stupid. It's mm-hmm. the worst thing ever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I usually, I try to approach all my videos, especially when I'm teaching, whether it's teaching on filmmaking or I don't know, any type of life teaching. Uh, I want it to be <laughs> basing from this position, which is that, Hey, if you kind of like, whatever it is I do and whatever kind of lifestyle I have, I guess I would say, um, then great. Listen to my advice. Um, but you, you probably aren't the same as me. Mm -hmm. So hear it, understand that it's a perspective and it's a way to do things, but I'm not Mm -hmm. prescribing this advice at large. I'm not painting in broad strokes. Um, or I am painting in broad strokes if I do say things, um, mm-hmm. but if only for the sake to simplify the concept, I'm not, right. I don't think m- the, these types of things in particular, how to run a business, um, in such a way that you can be sustainable and, and mm-hmm. find some type of happiness and fulfillment in it. I don't think, I don't think there's any one way to do that. There is a, mm-hmm. one or a couple of ways to grow businesses quickly but that doesn't interest me. I'm right. interested in what way did you grow your business so that you still felt like you along the way. Mm. And for some people that is posting three times a day and doing whatever. And like, awesome. If that makes your brain gears connect and feel good, do it. You know, so long as you're not harming other people, do that thing. It's going to work mm. for you. Yeah. But um, for me, it just causes too much stress, too much. I, I post maybe monthly on Instagram, mm-hmm. maybe, sometimes bi-monthly, and I don't mean twice a month, I mean the other bi-monthly. <laughs> <laughs> I never know if bi-monthly is <laughs> twice a month or every two months. Um, yeah, I just, I'm just trying to, I don't know, it's like, if, it's like I'm blindfolded. I'm just feeling 
what feels sharp and what feels soft and cushy. <laughs> and I go, I'll go soft and cushy. <laughs> yeah. It's really powerful what you said though. It's, it's, I was nodding my head hmm. uh, during that whole thing. I mean, it's, it makes a ton of sense if that is, if you, if you feel like you're still the part you said, where you still feel like yourself in that process. Mm-hmm. Like I have definitely experienced the posting too much or feeling the anxiety mm-hmm. of needing to do too much and just not being myself anymore. Oh, I should clarify too. I don't always feel like, I, I, I don't even sure. think I've gone such a way that it, that has always worked. That's just, that's the goal, right? That's what mm-hmm. I'm trying to do. But that's what you've do. learned. And yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's me at my best. Whereas me at my worst is, I'm not sure. Ask my wife. Touching a lot of sharp things. Yeah. Touching a lot of sharp things in the dark. (laughs) Oh, it's slimy. Um, I watched this TikTok the other day. Um, I wish I could tell you who made it, but he, I think he's writing a book on this. He basically, it's just talking to the camera and he said that we've moved beyond the age of information into the age of information curation. And I thought that was Mm. so fascinating, which is to say that no longer is knowledge power because all knowledge more or less is available to all people. So, Mm. so what's important is actually your ability to sift through information and and figure out, yeah, to curate and figure out what resonates with you, what doesn't and what, what leads you towards more happiness or towards more sadness and how can you do that? And he said this thing, I had some conversations with some friends of mine about this. They said that the impulse towards watching influencers, they said, isn't just vanity but it's another attempt to curate information. So in the past, you always Hmm. looked at your parents and said, teach me everything you know how to have a good life. You are my source of information. But now Hmm. people are doing that online. They're just trying to find who are people that look like they exemplify what I think a good life is and how can I curate that information to be part of my guide moving forward. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, definitely a lot of, if not most, influencers are not a good uh, marker of success. <laughs> but, but like we were mentioning before, it's, it's, I, it's the impulse that I'm, more, uh, that I'm more curious about talking about than anything. I think mm-hmm. it does show something very interesting that people at large, especially young people, look towards influencers to say, what do I do? We're all so scared and we're all trying to figure out who we are. Hmm. And so we look at hmm. people that at least have an aura of having their, their shit figured out. <laughs> and we just go, all right, fine, I'll listen to you. And I think it backfires for a lot of people because a lot of people online are pretending to have answers. I, I can't speak mm-hmm. for everyone, but that person does exist. There are people out there pretending to know how to have a good life and how to maybe grow a business or how to grow a business successfully or whatever. Um, and you might be curating bad information. So mm-hmm. I don't know the solution. I don't know how to avoid those people, but they exist. Mm-hmm. And knowing they exist is helpful. So at the very least, when people talk to you, when I talk to you and give information, take it with a grain of salt. I might mm-hmm. be wrong. I might be sure. leading you down a bad path. But knowing that I might be wrong lets you listen, take it in and see how it resonates, how it lines up with other things that you know to be true or believe to be true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's... Why I love TikTok. <laughs> a thesis. <laughs> that conclusion. Yeah. In conclusion. In summary. Gen Z. I wish I was younger. <laughs> I'm not 30. <laughs> but I, I, I think that leads well into the next thing we kind of wanted to chat with you about is like the, the whole aspect of community and like, you know, what it's like to bounce ideas off of other people, to have different voices like mm-hmm. in your corner, in the same room or in your circles. Um, and I do agree with you in the age of information where virtually everything is accessible to us. I was having this conversation with my wife the other night. It's like, what, what the heck do we even believe? You know, it's like you need mm-hmm. to be able to, in Jesse's words, process those. <laughs> oh, <laughs> did sorry, you process. say that, Tyler's? Uh, <laughs> I, I <laughs> didn't you say you didn't know which one? I don't. Oh, no. I say <laughs> process cheese and trust the process. <laughs> process. <laughs> They're different words. <laughs> but yeah, trying to, trying to figure out what like, what makes sense for you based on how to, how has community for you kind of been that sounding board? Obviously you have a space where you work with other people. What's that like? Yeah, that, that's a great question. I have a lot of circles of community and they're, sure. um, I feel like maybe I'm in the middle of Venn diagram between a lot of these circles. So yeah. I have 
the the biggest circle is like here's my audience my tribe whatever these are the people and mm -hmm. and i don't just mean people that consume there are a lot of people that watch my videos like we interact frequently online it's people that when they respond to me on Twitter about a video I posted, I actually do trust their opinion because I've mm -hmm. I've seen some of their work and we can, you know, back and forth that. Um, but that's the the biggest one. On a smaller scale, I have a circle of community that is other YouTubers, people like yourselves and people like Peter and Chris and Maddie and all these other people that um, I actually almost never make videos with. I very rarely mm -hmm. collaborate with these people, but I text with them all the time and ask for feedback and ask for mm. advice. And honestly, I, I feel like people don't know this enough. Pete is just the greatest guy. He is a 10 out of 10 solid, good human that really cares for me. He just texts me all the time to just tell me, like, he's like, I've been thinking about you. You know, my wife and I, we've been talking. Like, we really care for you. Like, we hope you're in a good place. We know that you're in a hard season. Right? Just so encouraging. And then when he mm. knows I'm having struggles with, you know, not just life stuff, but YouTube stuff, um, He'll weigh in and make sure that I always know um, he's someone that I can ask for help from, right? Um, so there's those types of people. And I love that I can mm -hmm. trust them because they've gone where I haven't yet. They're further mm -hmm. down this pathway of, what, internet fame or influence or stardom, whatever it is. Yeah. But they know things that I don't yet because they've, they've seen it at a scale that I haven't. Um, so mm -hmm. I trust them for those types of questions. And then even more importantly, really, while well, there's my family community, just my my wife and my two kids, that's the most important one, really. And then I have my my community in my city, some of my best friends, like a church that I'm a part of, and these people that I've spent hours and hours and hours talking with in all sorts mm -hmm. of settings. And so they know me sometimes better than I do because they've heard me articulate um, what kind of direction I see my life and what I want more of mm. and what I want less of. And so there are these people that I trust can actually give me feedback when I, when I have blind spots. Yeah. Yeah, and then, like sure. you said, like there's the studio here, which is a, a surprisingly diverse group of filmmakers. We all kind of do YouTube. I like mostly do YouTube and everyone else also does YouTube, but they do other things and they do other things better than I do. And so it's mm. awesome. We have a group chat that's overly active, if anything. It's like <laughs> we all have to mute it sometimes. Um, but where we share work and ask ideas and say, hey, what if I made a video about this? Or could I lend a hand from one of you in this type of thing? So yeah, community is just the most important thing, I would say. If anything, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the most important thing. <laughs> um, and I do I feel... Agree. I do feel a deep sadness that when I have videos that have more of, let's say, the studio community involved in it, I feel a sadness towards how many people comment saying, I, I wish I had something like that. I mm -hmm. wish I had people yeah. in my city, people in my hometown, and I don't know how to find that. I don't know if you have to go on Craigslist or, you know, I don't know. What's the, where you swipe? Not Craigslist. Tinder? I don't, I, <laughs> Tinder? I don't know. Don't they have a friend section LinkedIn. now? <laughs> <laughs> but i do want people to know that investing your time and your life into other people's lives um and having that be reciprocal is a good thing it's an important and a valuable thing and it sucks that sometimes those people will let you down and so yeah they'll, that'll get sad if i go down that route but um i love it so much and i wouldn't do it any other way hmm. yeah it's great man uh, I feel like all I feel like all the other questions are dumb, so I want to wrap here. Um, <laughs> Give me one dumb question. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. You're like three inch running shots. I wrote some of them. I don't want to feel bad. I have. So <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that, I don't think four inch shorts are even good, a thing. That's a good rapid fire one. We should write that down for another time. <laughs> <laughs> three, they're like someone who doesn't run. They're like, what are you talking about? Three or five. Answer now. <laughs> <laughs> Does four um, not exist? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's three, five, and seven. <laughs> you have to commit. <laughs> um, Jesse, yeah, I think. Yeah, yep. yeah go for it, Steven. <laughs> uh, dude, I yeah, I could I could sit here and 
talk and primarily just listen to you go off about all of yeah. this stuff because this has been a hugely encouraging genius, man. episode. I mean, Aww. you're you're just so wonderful and thoughtful and, and deep in the way that you've talked about everything. Like I've never Very heard a, a emotionally compelling pitch on TikTok before. You did that. Like, <laughs> well, I didn't just, plan on that's it. That's incredible. It's, it's the overflowing of my heart. Yeah. <laughs> but seriously, it's man. It's good, though. You think it, differently. Yeah. It's, been, it's been just so wonderful to, to listen to all of your thoughts on all of these things and for you to allow us to pick your brain on these things and just talk about it so like nonchalantly and also mm -hmm. very, very thoughtfully. And we just really appreciate that. And uh, I think, No, I'm I so think, glad we yeah, did. Yeah. You were right at the beginning. This turned out to be a very conversational. Good. Yeah, you threw out all the questions at the end. Yeah, we don't need them. Except I want one more. Okay, oh, yeah. one more. You recently tweeted, "I really, really like being a dad." Is that still true? Yeah, I mean, I tweeted that last night. <laughs> <laughs> I was not twelve hours ago. <laughs> so, how quick do you change your mind? Is the real question. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 truly the best. It's it's the greatest thing, and um, it's the hardest thing by a mile that I've ever done. But it's. Mm. it's the best. I tweeted that because I was playing under a blanket for like hiding from my wife with my kids and they were just being so funny. And I realized it was, I don't know, it was maybe only 30 minutes long, but I realized that for those 30 minutes, I hadn't had any med medication or anything. I didn't think about anything else. It was just mm. fully under the blankets. Dude, and these kids had such stupid ideas for what to do <laughs> <Yeah>. next, right? <laughs> like, my daughter's like, oh, I'm going to run out and, like, lure mom into the room so that we can surprise her. And, like, an average adult brain goes, that's not going to work. She's not going to be surprised <laughs> when a giant lump of – but I'm like – it was so – and I was like, yes, all of your ideas, do them. <laughs> and, and it was just to, – just, to just fully, like, let yourself go and embrace whatever game they want to play and be in it. Anyways – I just had such a good time, and then I accidentally started crying, and so I tweeted it. <laughs> like, happy tears. Happy tears. I love it. Those so if anyone tweets. saw that tweet, they didn't know that my screen had teardrops on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, I like being a dad. Well, jeez. Jesse, In fact, all right, I like being case. a dad so much that... Yeah, I would, I would give up. I mean, this is a weird thing. I don't know. I don't even have to think about it. Like, I could be just as happy in my life taking on a different job. Um, I think, I mean, maybe not just as happy, but I, I'm sure I could find an equally fulfilling life. Yeah. You, I don't know, bagging groceries or something. I'm trying to think of something that I wouldn't default yeah. to. Um, if, my, if the main chunk of my life, my outside of life, didn't change. I still had these communities of friends around communities of like family, all, all that kind of, if I could still have all that and be a dad and a husband, I think I'd be fine. I just, mm. other than buying these stupid tungsten cubes, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, in fact, like I'm going to say Full a thing circle. and then I'm going to backpedal. Full like I'm, cube. I'm really not a very materialistic person. This is a thrift mm -hmm. store, a long sleeve yep. shirt. Um, but when I do spend money, I spend it like an addict, like a freaking fiend. <laughs> But that's an ADHD thing. I'm just trying to find some kind of happiness in the in the wrong uh, the wrong way. But yeah, overall, f physical things. I don't I don't need the lifestyle that being a successful YouTuber can provide. The best thing yeah. about being a successful YouTuber is you get to make friends with really interesting people. Yeah, and I get sure. to make friends with you guys and with Chase Reeves and you know like just knowing people all over the place. But having a very intimate shared experience, which is that yeah. what a weird thing it is to put your life online and let people consume you like a bag of potato chips or something. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah it just you, you already know someone better when you have that shared experience. So I, I love all mm. that. The access I get to other interesting people. Thank you. Now go on telling me how I made your day better. <laughs> 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 Steven's like, I can't now. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, where can people follow all your stuff? Um, on Twitter at Jesse Driftwood one. <laughs> no, if you search, if you search Jesse Driftwood or sometimes on a social media platform, I'll just put it as JDRW. 
which mm-hmm. is a terrible short form for Jesse Driftwood because it's only the J and then D R W. It doesn't make sense, but there's J-Drew. a long story behind that. J-Drew. But um, yeah, I think on TikTok, I'm just at JDRW, but I mostly just use that for consumption. Yeah, if you just search Jesse Driftwood, it's it's pretty much just me that comes up, I think. Yeah. And if anyone you're, uh, you're from really Twitter is listening to this, please help Jesse get his handle back please because help. that account is completely inactive. <laughs> yeah, Jack, yeah. if you're listening, do you think Jack <laughs> listens to your podcast? Oh, definitely. definitely. Yeah. 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 Obviously. People listen on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about you guys? Where cool. can we find you on the internet? Uh, oh, YouTube. You know. Rally Caps. Spot iTunes. No, like, iTunes doesn't exist subscribe. anymore. Okay. Podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> and what are your up? personal social medias? What are you mean? We were going to talk about rally caps. You guys oh, have your wow. own lives. Oh, yes, Eric, yeah. Eric Flaubert, Where do you live? Steven Schultz. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Address, phone number. <laughs> Jesse, oh, shoot, we just we got a house. Wait, no, we, we bought a house, and I'm so excited. That's so exciting. That's so yeah, exciting. Yeah. A backyard. Or terrifying. And, and no, it's it's like nothing but exciting. Yeah, you've been in that condo a for a while, right? Or it's I don't know if you'd call it a long. condo or what, but yeah. it looks cool. Yeah, it's only 1,100 square feet, so with three children in it, it's not... Like oh, I forgot you had a fun. third one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we actually have a fourth one coming. So. No. I was going to say, ask me if I, have a, if I ever have a third one. I can promise you it's an accident. And I can also <laughs> yeah. promise you that at that point, you can re-ask me if I still really, really like being a dad. <laughs> being a dad. <laughs> yeah, you still seem happy. Yeah. You seem no, happy. Oh, He's a joyful it's, guy. It's nothing but an overjoyed overflowing mm-hmm. of my heart. Undoubtedly, yeah. kids are... Yeah, I agree with you. It's the best and the hardest thing ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Steven knows he's got cat kids. Yeah, dude. I'm married with two whole cats to look after. So, uh, dude, my wife is probably tough. gonna leave me. Well, I mean, hold on. I should. I should. Whoa, wait. What? <laughs> if hear me out, hear me out. If I don't get statement. us a cat for Christmas next year. <laughs> okay. Okay. She really wants a cat. She really. Like, a we had a cat, cat for a while, but yeah. No, we've got a cat in mind. Is whenever. I like cats. I like cats. I hate litter. You just want a bald one. You yeah, said you wanted a, skin, a, a, no, a no-haired cat. Yeah. So, yeah, we're actually looking at this cat called a... Oh, I wish I... She sends me five of them on Instagram a day. I can't even remember <laughs> what it's called. But they look like hairless cats, but they're furry and they're kind of curly-haired. And they've got these giant alien ears. The ears are so Ooh. big. Oh. Oh, it's called a Devon Rex. So you can look up Devon Rex if you're interested oh, in cats. Oh, I know what those are. For yeah, all you listeners, Steven's if very, you want to find Steven's me online, look up Devon Rex. <laughs> Devon Rex. That's my name. <laughs> yeah, you should title this name. podcast Devin like Rex. featuring Devon Rex. <laughs> With your face in the thumbnail. <laughs> and two big and ears. ears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Yeah, they would just be like, "Oh, it's another Jesse Jesse video, like yeah. making a dummy of himself and dressing in like a yeah. pink outfit or whatever." <laughs> my, oh, my dummy's over there, bent over backwards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we'll call it there. Thank you so much, Jesse. Thanks for having. We love me. you. This is great. Love you guys. Too.